go. Hello and welcome to episode 6 of this TW 2016 WF save. We are at WrestleMania 2 in 1986. Not a lot has happened in between this episode and last, as it has been just a month. Uh, a recap of our storylines at the minute. Hogan Bundy is 78, Piper Orndorff 77, the Dream Team versus the US Express is a 77. The Women's Feud, uh, which the match will be between Velvet McIntyre and Wendy Richter is a 59. Santana and Savage is an 81. Bret Hart and Zabisco is a 71. And Andre and Morocco is an 80. Uh, Andre the Giant versus Don Morocco is sort of a... Andre needed away under the card, had an interview with Mean Gene, sort of saying that he hopes to get a match at Mania, uh, whether it's for a belt or not, and then he was interrupted by Morocco, who sort of laughs it off as Andre being past his prime and still trying to cling on, whereas he's, you know, in his prime and ready to move up the card. So it's that sort of a feud. Our titles are virtually the same as last episode. Hogan, Savage, Wendy, and the Tag Team Champions, the US Express. We did a Psycho Sermon as well before this, so hopefully we should get a good deal out of the show tonight. Usually, uh, we've got a couple of matches with like, like Hogan Bundy is a wild brawl, and we're sort of trying to lift and count the card in certain spots, which I don't usually do, I just sort of let the card run its normal way, but we'll see how it goes. Could could fill up this mini, it could not, but we're taking a risk, you know. We'll see how it goes. So we'll get just straight into the episode here. So we start off with Gorilla Monsoon and Vinnie Mac hyping up tonight's events with a 77. Good start. As they hype up Hogan Bundy, uh, Savage Santana, and Piper Orndorff as the big, big matches for tonight. Then we follow that up with Andre's over the top entrance as he comes down for his match with Morocco as they get a 69 not good they've bad chemistry but in a match that had fantastic heat and great wrestling Andre and Don Morocco uh, Andre defeated Don Morocco in 10-14 by pinfall with the body slam and match that was pretty placed as a card okay the card really hot that was about a day um, Andre got a 76 Morocco got a 71 and he improved in performance. Andre celebrating got an 80, so hopefully that's picked the event back up. 70. In decent match, David Boy Smith and the Hart Foundation defeat the All Stars. Zabisco, Malenko, and Smothers. In terms of in ring work, Brett's head and shoulders above. Smothers was the weak link. As in 11.37, Brett beat Malenko by pinfall. Jim was a 54, Brett was a 78. Davey was a 61, Smothers a 36, Malenko 49, and Zabisco 64. Disappointing from him, but everybody else is kind of where I expected them to be. News Express got a 77 in their interview, hyping up their tag team title match. And the match gets a 80 overall, that's good. And about that superb wrestling and great heat, the US Express defeated the Dream Team in 1334 when Barry Windham beat Greg Valentine by pinfall with a flying lariat, they make defense number 5. Rotunda and Wyndham getting 85 and 86 respectively, Valentine with 79 and Brutus up with 71. No improvements. Cindy Lauper returns for the first time to television as she enters with her friend Wendy Richter for her title match against Velvet McIntyre. This is where we're kind of trying to cool down the crowd before we go into our big three matches to close the show so it might suffer there. 63 still a good match Wendy defeated Velvet in a decent match in 1027 by pinfall with a silly DDT Wendy makes defense number two uh, so we brought the crowd back down a little bit uh, Velvet got a 47 Wendy got a 69 at the minute Wendy's just so over we can't really take the belt off of her I've got a plan uh, of who might step up but there's a long way to go to sort of build someone up to be at the same level as Wendy a freestyle segment, uh, Piper 
and Cowboy have their interview with Mean Gene in Indy 5. Piper looked excellent as they hype up the bout with uh, Paul Orndorff. Piper's entrance gets an 83. Orndorff's interview gets an 89. Uh, fantastic performance. Enjoyed the freedom of being off script. No improvements. And the match gets an 83. Not as good as I was hoping for. But good all the same. Piper defeated Orndorff in 1554 by pinfall. During the match, Cowboy ran in and attacked Orndorff. Uh, Piper got a 94, Orndorff got a 91, what went wrong then? Uh, inconsistency. Oh, it's too short. And then announcing an... No, hot storyline. I suppose it was in the 70s. Uh, 78, our first ever... They're not on screen, but our first ever Hall of Fame inductee, Pat Patterson, uh, is interviewed backstage by me and Gene as he... Hypes up how big of an accomplishment it is for him, and also hypes up, you know, being the first Intercontinental Champion, how he hopes that Tito Santana can get the belt back from the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Then we have Tito's entrance at the 78. And then Savage has his interview where he sort of says he doesn't care what old-timers like Pat Patterson say. He's going to be the Intercontinental Champion for a very long time, as he looks excellent, Gene looks well, and Elizabeth is underwhelming. Savage gets an 89 on his entrance. Hopefully this will be a big match. Hopefully. 81, that's way lower than I thought. Was it too long, maybe, this one? Uh, in an exceptional match, Randy Savage defeated Tito Santana by a uh, flying elbow smash. Savage makes defense number one. Savage got an 85, Santana got a 78. Improved in performance. Savage held back, Tito held back. Low experience. They got an 84 on the show before this, so that's unfortunate that they didn't save the big one for Mania. Maybe I just left it too long. Uh, Savage's Celebration gets a 76. Bundy's Entrance. Uh, I freestyled it because it's a menace entrance, not an overness entrance. As he came out looking excellent, 84 rating. Hogan's big uh, interview before the match, 82. This Mania might not be as good as our first year, but maybe Hogan and Bundy can save it. I don't think they will. Judging by how everything's going so far, they might also underwhelm. 94 for Hogan's over the top at, uh, entrance, and their match got an 81, so again, not great. In an exceptional match, Hogan defeated Bundy in 1341 by pinfall with a leg drop. Hogan has defense number 3. I mean, Hogan got a 90 and Bundy got a 93. Maybe we just weren't over enough in the Mid-South. It's just this is where Bundy is at his best, so... Maybe we sacrificed a bit too much by coming here. No improvements. Uh, Hogan didn't deal with the pressure of going all out, neither did Bundy. That's fair, but brawling is what Bundy's best at, so I'll take an 81. And then Hogan caps off the show, just celebrating at 77. And overall, Armenia was an 85, so... Not great. I don't think it was as good as the first one. I'll have to maybe double check that. But I will take it as a good sort of like cap off and hopefully we'll build towards some stronger things. Might have to get a Savage Santana 3 out of this now, or 4 I guess. Which might not work then. Because I feel like they, there's better in them than 81. Has to be. So our speech will be for Hulk, he got in the 90s, Bundy got in the 90s, and yeah, we'll give it to Bondorf. Hogan's very happy, Bundy's pleased, Bondorf pleased, okay. So as for the question of this episode, I was just wondering whether or not you guys think that we should carry the save over to... TW 2020, which I'll probably be getting in the coming week, or uh, probably the weekend, or whether or not you think we should leave this save here and start afresh on 2020. So, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next episode.